Hey, Doug Milley, who are you talking, Ronnie? Doug Grove? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was Doug Miller. No, we got Doug Rowe. I know Billy's there. Doug Rowe is in. Doug Miller is in. Okay, Doug Rowe's in. Doug Miller's in. And Doug Miller. <laughs> oh, I've got a whole bunch of folks in there tonight. Um, I'm here. Been here. <laughs> uh, I got to add, I got to, oh, I lost it just now in the mix. But uh, Billy Dirty, you doing the, the backstroke down there, Billy? It's pretty wet. We got about nine inches of rain in two days. Whoa! Saw it on the news tonight. I mean, it, when I thought when I got up this morning, the streets were flooded, and I thought I just heard a little bit of thunder. But we have a 130-pound dog, black dog, a lab that was trying to climb up in the bed with me. Uh, she doesn't like thunder, but uh, we only got a little rain up here. Uh, and where Billy's at, nine inches. Wow. Okay. Um, some my way. Yeah, who, who's losing the desert because of this? Uh, because of the dryness. I'm up in Colorado, and everything's on fire bands right now because everything's so dry. Wow. Uh, it doesn't get that way by us very often. Um you know, I've got something else that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, and that was in this come up right now, using graph paper for detailing or designing. Now, this is just, say this is quarter-inch graph paper. Say it's three-eighths inch. Say it's one inch, whatever. It's all the same, and then you throw on it what you want to look at it. And um, I thought I had this keyed up. All right, playing from the start. Um, say you want... You want to copy that picture, that bottle stopper you saw in Ruth Niles' website or on eBay or on Etsy or any place else. You see a beautiful shape for a, a bottle stopper or a cone or a spindle or anything else. You pop the picture and you put it on the graph paper. And you see this one? I, li I like these outside shapes. Kind of a candle flame shape you know, or, or a, a transmission, you know, dri drive shape. But to get the sizes, if you're guessing at them from, you don't really have the piece to look at. If you're guessing from them, you can stop guessing them, lay it out on the graph paper, and boom, you got the sizes, you have the details. You get all, it's like cheating on, uh, on design. And I've told a lot of folks over the years, if you got a problem with a jar or a box and where the lines come, uh, draw it out first. It's easy to erase and it's easy to add lines. But on your lathe, it's easy to erase. But tell me how you can add the lines. It just doesn't work out. So get your pad of graph paper. The next time you're designing a piece and it's, it's in here, but it's not down there, draw it out on a piece of graph paper. I saw a professional turn the other day with an electronic version that was on her screen. It was a teaching feature but she had the background of the grid and whatever she drew was on that grid. And she drew the, the piece out, uh, the wall thicknesses, uh, how to base, pardon me, how to base with the shape, the detent for lid, how the lid, lid go, and kind of rough sketch out her idea for a, a finial with the ideas of the perfect shape for the finial. And all that was on paper long before she got started, long before she turned the machine on, probably before she picked a block of wood out. Uh, and this this piece of grass pa graph paper will help you when you get down the line and you say, wait, uh, before I go through the wall, how thick are those walls supposed to be inside and out? So if the outside gets smaller, the inside can't stay the same. Remember the rule, 747A, that's the rule. The inside can never, the inside dimension can never exceed the outside dimension. It's in the book. All right. Um, yeah. And then, so Eddie, to, to add to that, you know, when you're talking about the lady having uh, the, doing it electronically. So Android users, um, there's an app called EndNote and it is exactly that. It's, it, it's, it's a graph paper book. And for me, that's what I use whenever I get a, get a harebrained idea or a thought in my head, you know, something I want to think, um, think I'm going to try and do. And, and so I, I go to, go to my end note on the, on the app on my phone and draw it out. So 
That is I N note. Correct. All right. And and so I, I, I pulled I pulled one up so I can share you know an, an idea on a on a ladle that I've dr drawn out and so I've I've got it on the share screen so I don't know if you can see it or not or hold on I got to turn I got to turn it on Dale Dane um you went to the app store for that um I think it. For me, it came out. It was automatically on my on my phone, um, but I'm. But it's in the it's in the app store. It's in in note. I n n o t e. Okay, I think you can do the share on it now, Dane. Okay. We got a blur. We got a jump. Didn't go all the way there. Huh. Dane Chandler, you got okay. it. I'm looking. See it? Now I see it. Whew, you flunked out of art school. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a horrible drawer. But you know, these are just harebrained ideas that I, I get when I'm watching TV or whatever, you know. So yeah, you know, and also you've got the size there, or you can take the size from there. Correct. Every square there is worth five sixteenths or three eighths or right. whatever. And you know, so and then you can do different little books, you know. So I've, I've got a little jig folder. Not much in them, <laughs> but right. yeah, that's you know, in note, that's what it is. Thank you, Dane. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I think you have to get out, Dane. Um, you have to press and leave. I can't get you out. All right. Then I can cancel this. Okay. I lost where I was working at. We'll be back. I can make your screen uh, shareable, but you have to let me know you want it shareable. And uh, I, I did it wrong again. So I'll go correct it again. Anybody else got anything they want to show off this evening? Uh, I got it one participant at a time. Okay, now we got you. Thank you, Dane. Um, You're welcome. The other day, um, someone wrote me about products and said, can I make a jig to grind a 40-40 grind, which is the big thing now. Can I make a jig to grind a 40-40 grind to where it's the same grind every time? Uh, a lot of promotion, on, I've seen all the, all the guys at the demos and the shows, and to do a 40-40 grind, they have two slot, two marks on the table, and they set the table at the 40 degrees, and they check with the, with them. Um, protractor. Protractor. Uh, protractor. Protractor. All right, I'm getting there. A protractor and get make sure it's 40 degrees. I don't care what numbers on the on a, the the table say. You want to make sure that the angle at that point from the groove or the the flute to the face. It's 40 degrees. That's what it's supposed to be. If yours is coming out 42, hey, I'm all right. If coming out 45, that's where the market was heading. So let's talk about 4040. Uh, there is a jig, if you have a Wolverine system or an adjustable jig system, it is a thousand knockoffs of Wolverine, um, that you can take and set the gauge on a Wolverine as high as that Lego go to get as straight as possible. And I wish I had one here, but I don't have one. But you put that thing as high as it'll go, and then you put an insert in for gauging where you place it on your grinder. Um, so you put it in, your, in the Wolverine, you set the arm back using this jig, and then when you put your tool in the jig with a proper extension, and you roll it back and forth in front of your, your, your grinding wheel, you don't do an actual elliptical grind, you do a sweeping round grind. And because you're up high enough, it doesn't come out as elliptical as if you were lower, swinging it around. So that's it. And an old friend of mine, uh, Ron Brown, Ron Brown's best, has got a jig that'll do that. And I can't wait to try it because I've got a couple of 4040s out there that I've ground. My only problem with it is it got grinding it by hand. I was throwing steel on the floor that I paid for. With this rig, if I get it set up right, 
one pass, I touch up the teeth and I go back to cutting again. It doesn't take me a long time to t turn it up. I'm not adjusting my eye for the flex and the move and the swing and all. And that's why I stay hot on the fact that if you use a jig to sharpen with, you're going to get a much sharper, easier, and less money going to tool people. That's a key. Ronnie, you got some more on Cindy's classes? Honey, you got to blink at me. I got it. I got it, Eddie. I was clicking myself to unmute. And, yeah, for Cindy Droza, let me pull it up. All right. C Cindy Droza, she gives online demos. Uh, she has one coming up June the 27th. That's 11 o'clock Mountain Standard Time for $10 per person. Uh, this this time will be a, a natural edge burl lidded bowl with color. That's basically what we've seen this this past weekend. Uh, watching Cindy when she puts on a, a demo, you you can expect to be there three to four hours. She takes her time, she shows you exactly what she's doing, how she's doing it, why why she's doing it, and she'll stop, she'll explain, she'll let you ask questions at the same time, and she'll she'll answer them as she goes. When she's finished, as an open session, you can talk to her, ask a question. In fact, the last two demos that I've watched of her. She's even going as far as showing her, her video equipment and telling you everything that she has, how it works, where she got it, and everything else. She shows you her, her whole shop, and her shop, half of it is her living quarters. So it, it's a very thorough dem demonstration, and if you... Uh, you can always learn something from Cindy. Yes, very good. And if you like to join those, you go to her website and there's a there's a future demo list and registration. And I think you can charge it to PayPal. Um, I'm not certain about that. But we we saw um, saw Cindy a couple of times, and there's other folks doing this. Uh, but if you're wondering about doing your own videos. And I get guys say, I don't have money for the equipment. I can't do this. I can't do that. A whole lot of us overlook a major piece of equipment that we all have. And it works pretty good. I got it upside down. It's my cell phone. Yeah. This takes awesome video. It racks up some mileage. Not on, not on your pay mileage. It puts a little load on here. So you may have to go back in after you download it and actually remove it from your phone. Easy move if you read the book. Um, but you can videotape on your cell phone and transfer it to your laptop, desktop, pen, uh, pad, whatever, edit it if you'd like to, and then send it out. And we're working with our, when we work on our website, and I'm working on that, um, then you'll be, we'll be able to take those pieces and add them to our website. Um, and the reason we're still working on the website is two, three weeks ago, I had a major problem and fried one of my hard drives. Um, everything I had sent for the website was on that hard drive. And in send, instead of sending it to player A, I sent it to player B. And player B is trying to scratch his head, wonder why I got this crap or this stuff. So we're working on that website right now. I have to go back and redo some of the things I had by, by hand in order to get it linked up. Right? And uh, another thing, the other day, um, I had a guy come over, and he wanted to, to he wanted to take a piece. I got to explain this. He had a piece chucked up in one chuck, and he wanted to turn it around to push it back up against a dead block or whatever, but he didn't want to lose the center. And we're talking about the way to jerry it and get it there. Well. Let me, let me, I got to get this done right. Um, I don't know what, you, what you're looking at because I got the wrong button pushed, but I'm trying to get there. You should be looking at an adapter 
that is made by a one way. And this, are y'all seeing that, Ronnie? No. No? Okay. What we're seeing, Eddie, is the WWW members gallery. Yeah, I got to stop and go back to the other one. Probably in a wrong line. Um, I, I had it loaded for some other time. Um, so hey, Eddie, while well, no, you're looking no. for that, I just want to tell everybody, this is Doug hey. Rowe. The, um, the videos that I've been uploading to the Facebook Worldwide Woodturners page, that's all done on my cell phone. No editing. I either, I've done some live button on Facebook and you get to watch me doing it as I'm doing it. But most of those videos I put on uh, the Worldwide Woodturners Facebook page, it's straight off my cell phone. I videotape myself doing it. Then I log on to Facebook. It asks you if you want to upload a, a photo or a video. Click the video, and it goes on there pretty quick. It, it takes a little bit longer than loading a picture, but it's it's pretty dang simple. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, no crazy camera equipment, just my cell phone. Not and nothing famous. Nothing. I mean, Dane shot his thing just now, showing you the bolt, the PC turn, and the dying and the die they used, and all that. And that was on your cell phone, correct, Dane? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's that simple, and we all have these toys. Probably me, tools, um, and it, well, they come they come out really nice. Um, I really like the availability. I didn't use. I had high end cameras, high end DVD cameras, high end chip cameras, uh, high end output to direct to the computer cameras. And after playing with it a while back, videotaping something at at Ronnie's shop, uh, I realized the video that I accidentally shot on my cell phone was higher quality than I was getting out of the other pieces. So uh, I've switched over to the cell phone and I've got a Nikon that I'm, I'm using that because it's got a zoomable lens, uh, much, much easier. But they're, they're both storing on chips, no film, no disc or anything else. And they come out really nice. Uh, I wanted to show you this rig and I can't get it to come up, but because it's here and I can get to it, I'm going to go to um, our members gallery this week and that's if I got it up right Ronnie it's saying members gallery I don't see any pictures yet uh, well all right now there you go this is by Brian Ritter you know, a minute ago we were looking at a piece with some great texture to it and stuff this piece almost talks to you a uh, great bark uh, I don't know if they're bark inclusions because they're gl glossy but uh, it's got great chatoyans and the way it, it's made up, I mean, some of these things look like holes have been filled. They were not. This is actual wood. Bob Steiner did this one. Is this work or play? I mean, if this was on the table at my house, my old man would have went and got some nuts every day to make us crack them. But, Ready for hickory nuts. Yeah. And then I got this from Brian Rotter. Oh, Rotter, pardon me. Um, this is a square bowl he turned. A square dish really nice i love the figuring in this and the fact that uh, the the sides seem to sweep in but they really don't they're straight but it's the cut that made them give that appearance this is from don the magnificent and i gotta say it because don sent me this but didn't put his last name on an email uh, so it's a really nice piece i don't keep giving nicknames when you send a picture a photo in put your name on it paul dotson called me the other day these are empty, yes, empty, shotgun shells he gets from the range. And then he puts a little wood band on them and mounts them to a stainless uh, stainless stopper. He uses Ruth Niles product. Um, but you can see he's got, wait, wait, he's got more. Here you go. He's got a whole load of them. Hi, um, Cam. Yay. Uh, this is Paul Dotson. Those, hey, uh, Paul. Those, those spent shells are actually on a, almost a full-size mandrel. And where you see the uh, very edge of the shell meet the wood, uh, there's a little tiny groove in there that I use your uh, R2Rs on there to sneak up in there and put a little groove so that it sticks down in there. All it right. Hides the edge. I I'm going to send you a complete step-by-step -step, um, how to do this so you can share the whole process uh, like in a that. video. I like that, Paul, because we still have the newsletter we try to put out once a month, and that's what I'm looking for, input from the turners, the members, 
to show us how they do it and explain it. Because if somebody else wants to do this, they see a picture, they just hear you. But if you're looking at it on a replay, which we work on, it will put them there. Don Ritter turned this in. I did find out this is one piece of wood. Great lines, great color. I like the coloring in it. Uh, Don had another. I think this is the same piece, but I can't be sure uh, with this edge on it. I got to looking at it. And if you put something into our, our gallery, uh, tell us more about it. Um, this is from Daniel. Oh, here we go. Devin Edetto. I'm only going to do that one time. Uh, Daniel turned this piece. It's really nice. I got another piece he did too. See, I left the name off. I made a Daniel number two. Um, <laughs> but that that's a nice looking piece. And then Jason, the wonderful, because I don't have Jason's last name either. He did this. I'm going to size it as probably hey, six. Colette. Who? Yeah. Is that you, Jason? Okay. Yes. All right. I can't spotlight you when I'm doing this. Oh. Uh, no. How big is it? All right. Uh, not real big. Uh, started off about like that. <laughs> it's okay. maybe four or five inches tall. So it's a quart can you got it sitting on top of, right? Well, it, it was actually just a piece of the log that it came out of. Oh, how nice. So, piece of aspen that had been sitting under the porch for a couple of years, two, three years. I had no cracks in it, so I used it. Great, great idea. That's what we're supposed to do. Doug Miller did this. I think Doug is with us right now. Doug, hey. Yes, sir. This is one of your pieces. Uh, I like the coloring. How did you do it? Okay, I've got it right here in my hand. In fact, um, that was turned out, um, everything except the center. The center was left, um, and then uh, everything was coated with uh, high gloss black spray paint. And then the, uh, all the other colors are, those are Joe Sonia iridescent paints. And those were just put on with some blobs, took some uh, a plastic bag that something had come in, wadded that up, and just kind of twisted through those uh, blobs of Joe Sonia paints and then allowed that to dry. Uh, if you haven't used it, the Joe Sonia paints are white until they dry and then all the colors come out. They really show up best on something really dark. It doesn't have to be black, but it does need to be dark. So uh, once that dried and then it's got loads of uh, like 12 or so coats of lacquer on that, um, not back every other coat, and uh, that's it. And then the center was turned out. How'd you do the uh, the lacquer spray can and uh, airbrush? Spray can, can, yeah, rattle can. Okay. All right. That looks really good, Doug. Nice. Um, yeah, it's uh, you saw on your paint. Where did you get that? I ordered those off of, uh, I believe, Amazon. Oh, everything comes from Amazon. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Where else? Pretty piece. No, no, blotting with a with a paper bag is when they did plaster in this house that I I have, uh, they did the walls with this irregular texture, and uh, when I called the guy to say how do you repair it and brown, roll the brown bag and push it on the wall, and yeah. which end up is what you end up with, and that's what this is. You roll right. the bag and push it on there. Uh, I have, I've used balloons to dip into yes. the collar and and take the balloon and push it onto the piece. And it, it turns out pretty good too. Yes. Doug, Another method is just to use yeah. air. <laughs> yeah. Doug? Uh, yes, sir. That's a gallery piece there. Well, thank you. <laughs> it is. Look really good. Looks really good. Presents itself very nice. Uh, and we don't do this butt thing here. All I got to say is I like it. <laughs> All right. Um, Doug, if you can. Pardon me, write up the, a description of your process. Sure. And a product you use. Uh, we'd yeah. love to include it in the, 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 uh, the newsletter. Use it here on this program and on our website because our job is to distribute this information. So like Ronnie asked, where you got that product at? That's a key part of that article. Yes. Uh, Steve Thompson did something the other week and 100 people called me or wrote me 
uh, what was that stuff he told? What was it? Where, where was this? Because we're we're turners. We don't keep an ink pen and a pencil, a piece of paper around. We really don't. So uh, if you do that, I very much appreciate it, sir. Absolutely. And, and that that stands for every one of you guys out there or gals. If you've got something to share, send it to us. We'll throw it in there. We'll use it. We'll share it to everybody. And if you've got a photograph that you want to share, and remember, I want more details than just a picture. If you got a photograph, send it to worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. No capitals, no spaces, nothing special. You have to stand on one foot, none of that. Worldwidewoodturners <laughs> at gmail.com, and uh, we'll use the photograph. Now, every week we do the, the gallery. Um, we use them to block up in, a, in, a, in the newsletter, and we have other places also. We're looking to build a gallery probably on the website that we can show all your work and people can see anything. If they want to do a bottle stop or a bowl, a platter, a plate, something ornamented, something deep, something shallow, uh, a platter, or you guys having a rough time turning it, a saucer, um, all those things can be on our site and it's to share with. But I need more details when you send them in because I don't want to guess at it and say this is such and such and I didn't have the facts. And I'm a witcher. I'll make up stuff if I have to. It's just the way the rules go. All right. We, I'm looking down my list right now. From my list, I'm covered. Ronnie, how about you? I'm covered here. We, right. We're going on a road trip tomorrow. We're going to see Johnny Hughes. And we're going to do a little filming there, be, be with him. If anybody wants us to come and, and film at your shop, that's all you got to do is send us the air flare and put us up for a few days and we'll be glad to come. I'll drive if you're not in a hurry. <laughs> Doug Bro, you got anything to add tonight? I got some things to show if we're uh, ready to start showing some stuff. We can do that, Doug. Say something again. I'm right here, test, test, test. Um, uh, let me turn my camera around, it'll be a picture of my face instead of my piece I'm about to show you. There we go, it's me. Hey. All right. The, the you, that you, side or the better side? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to leave that alone, Doug. <laughs> All right. Now I got There we you. go. You got me. Well, I was there. I was there. Yeah. They tell me there there's an easy button to do this. All right. Let me flip this bad boy around. All right. So the piece that I had the rice in. And you, you asked what, why you got the rice in it. I explained because I don't have the patience to wait for it to dry, yada, yada, yada. So here it is. Um, it turned out pretty good. The After having several people look at the wood, not so much this piece, but the wood that I chopped it up out of, the consensus is it is Palo Verde. I just got real lucky with the grain looking like olive wood. But we're going to go ahead and call this Palo Verde. Now, what did we finish it with? We finished it with tongue oil, and then I started with some index lacquer, and then I changed the thumb lacquer, and then I went back to index lacquer. Does everybody know what that is? No. That's the, uh, the lacquer can. You start off with your index finger, but then it gets fatigued, yeah. so you take the thumb lacquer. Ah. <laughs> hey, I'm making um, notes. This is not fair. I'm making <laughs> notes. Yeah. Uh, that's the tongue oil that I used. Okay, earlier tonight, we were having the discussion about the face plates. This piece was huge when I started off, and it absolutely was done on a face plate. And that's the cutoff. I actually still happen to have it on there, so I grabbed it just to show it tonight. That is the face plate that comes with the power matic. Those uh, are down the sunk screws? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all the way down in there. Nothing's going to get caught on them, and they are not drywall screws. The um, I had some cutoffs left over from this piece, so I decided to grab one and see what I could make out of it. It didn't have very pretty grain on it, except for down towards the bottom. I had some, but there's there's no finish on this piece at all. But that was a cutoff, so hopefully you can kind of see that that angle right there. Makes a great scoop for the rice bag. Yeah. Or a Barbie doll chair or something. My wife collects Snoopy figurines, so she's already had a Snoopy thing in there. I had to take it out to bring it in tonight. And then... Uh, and he, you turned it with that angle in there. Say that again? You turned it with that angle on it. 
I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was it was spinning like so. Um, now and there's a, a little the the worm screw. So I had started off between centers, so the center was kind of hitting around in this area, and it didn't work out so well. It it let me know when it decided to detach, but I was at a very low speed because it wasn't balanced, no danger. Um, then I decided to change over to a worm screw. Went a little deeper than I needed to, but eh, it was a junk piece of wood anyway. But uh, you had asked me when I showed you what I'd gotten for Father's Day if I would do a demo on it. Um, not tonight, but eventually I will. But that is how I hollowed the the big piece, and it is actually also how I was able to turn this without getting my hands too close in there and and banging up some some regular handheld tools. So that's the the cool little toy that my my wife and kids got me for. Father's Day. And so Very if nice. anybody is interested in one, you know, all I can tell you is about the brand that I got. It's the first one I've ever had. So I can't really compare it to any other hollowing system. Um, but I'm very pleased with it. I just basically watched their video and uh, learned as much as I could. And then I jumped right into it. And it's so simple to use. They are. They are. And it, you scratch your head and say, why well, didn't have this? Uh, yeah, they're not cheap, but man, it was easy to use. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Anything else tonight? That That's all like I got for y'all. Unless anybody's got that looks questions. like that'd be a good M and M scoop to me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you really, really like M and M's, all right. Uh, let's check in now with co-host Ron Radliff. Do you have anything to add, 